Ellen, why don't you join us? Hello. We haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> Four minutes. Fourteen minutes. Ellen Cassie, Office of Legislative Council. Can I get an update? Were you, you, what, what happens when I am? Well, we had a we're a discussion about <laughs> primary versus secondary retail and principal retail as used in the interchange rule. Mm -hmm. um, we had a vote and uh, we decided to strike a sent one of the sentence the sentence that referenced primary retail. Principal retail. Principal retail. Yes. I apologize. Yeah, we learned clarified what principal retail was. Oh look, it's on the same page that Mr. Starrow was on. Page yes. seven. ability um, in that section um, one, once they have an once you know a municipality with an approved plan then they're taking it away from act 250 and and um, so leaving it silent leaves it up to them as to what their municipal plan does in my mind um, and we've decided to give deference to their their duly adopted plan, and and um, the the definitions of retail were onerous, and and I think we felt that we needed to have a de if we're talking about it, we need a definition for it, and the definition. Um, did not seem to be fitting what you might want to see um, as a as a traveler. Um, gasoline is a, is a retail establishment, especially if they sell coffee and donuts and Slim Jims, and um, <laughs> and provide restrooms and so on services for the travelers. So, I think I think um, so. I felt that that we didn't want to prohibit that from happening um, and that I further felt that if the municipality did not take over that the jurisdiction of that interstate that there were multiple things in Act 250 that could speak to that issue. Do you want to add something? Sure, I would agree with everything Jim said else, but also the, the, the first sentence there I think does the bulk of the lift in that, in, uh, you know, in Roman numeral five, the ensure that allowed uses uh, the types of design that complement rather than compete with the downtowns, that exist in downtown for the Um So getting rid of that second sentence, um, I think is not a, does not uh, change the purpose much. Um, since the first sentence, I think, is where all the, the power is. Yeah, you felt the first sentence come. Oh, I did. But it's basically covering it. I'm not sure I do either. Okay, thanks for the update. Where are we? What else happened? That's it. That's, That's what it. we talked about. And uh, then. It's good with the interstate exchange feature here. The whole old, did you get through it? Yeah. yeah, we did. I did go through it. All right. So, you know, next, uh, where we left off yesterday was page 15, which starts the discussion about the board. So I didn't know if you wanted to start there, if you wanted to move on. I think it would be a good time to have a little overview discussion. I don't expect we'll come to any decisions, but I'd love to hear what folks are thinking, and I don't know, uh, Mark, did you share my summary table? I did not, um, but I have it. Oh, great. I can. So I did a little 
summary, it's, it may need some explanation because the, the, particularly the abbreviation oh. DC, District Coordinator, District Commission, but I'll fill that in if you notice it. And it's like, what's in our bill? What's in the joint proposal? Places that we identify, I think, goals. Oh, it's the same one, yeah. Oh, she, did, she might have made an update. No. You re, re emailed me last night, so. No, I think it was an anyway, I'll tell you. Um, mistake. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so you'll see, and then I have kind of a, there's identified the shared goals of the changing, the reason we're having this conversation. Um, I think there's a lot of agreement between the verb and the joint proposal, and so I tried to articulate those. And then there's the hybrid one approach. Um, which is a little closer to the verb in the hybrid two, which is a little closer to the joint proposal. Um, and I started doing pros and cons, but I didn't get very far. We could do that now. Um, and or this can spur just a conversation of where each of you is at on this topic right now. Um, uh, we, we had heard from Ron Shams. How is his, is he one of these hybrid? I think it's his would be hybrid one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Trevor? Mm -hmm. Who's uh, I answer my own question. Mom when chance. you read full time, we're under hybrid. You mean three afternoons? Yeah, same as okay. that, yeah. And it, what was the question? Mm -hmm. Well, I was just asking about full time board. Which one's that? I see that it's referenced. She thought it was more hybrid one. Okay. okay. Although I don't know if the Shems. Yeah, I think it was appealed to the board. You could also do um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I, I guess where I am at this point in time uh, is to retain the districts as they, as they are right now. Online. Uh, establish an e-board or full-time board with three individuals to uh, two majors. Uh, maintain what we're doing in the district commissions right now with two individuals from each one joining the three to do majors. Keeping jurisdictional opinions of minors at the district commission level. Having district coordinators do the jurisdiction opinions, although I like the idea of the commission doing those, I just don't think it's workable in terms of the time frame and bringing people together to make decisions. And uh, and appeal directly to the Supreme Court. It's going to hold the appeals. And it's going to be, uh, as it is right now, in terms of uh, the local district commissions. Uh, coordinator doing the uh, jurisdiction opinions and then the minor being handled by the local commissioners. So and then appeals going to the and then go e appeals then going to the Supreme Court of Great Britain. Mm -hmm. So that's hybrid two. Essentially, yes. Yeah. That be clarified as a hybrid number two plus? I think it's hybrid two. It's just hybrid two? Yeah. I, I was just clarifying that I think that the district coordinator would do the just jurisdictional opinions, not the commission. So with the hybrid two, do, we, do the districts still, are they still there? Yeah. yeah. Um, and what happens under hybrid two? What happens with the district coordinators? They stay. But if the district commissions are doing the jurisdictional opinions. No, I said the district coordinator does the jurisdictional opinions. Oh, okay. Sorry. And that the commissions would do the minors. In other words, the decisions be made by the district coordinator. The way it is now. The way That's it is how it now. is now. District 
coordinators, and it's also that way in the joint proposal, and that that particular thing is the same throughout all of these. Mine was contemplating having the commission do it. I think we're moving away from that. And so JOs would stay with the coordinator, but minors would be done in the way they are now, which is primarily led by the um, district coordinator with some involvement of the commission. Okay, I just noticed that under hybrid two, you have the district commissions overseeing the JOs. That's what I just said, except for that. Right. We're, we're moving away from that. Okay, thank you. We're moving away from just which one? Do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To district commissions overseeing jurisdictional meetings. We're going to keep, we're going to cross that out. Right, okay. And say district commissions. They're not going to write those opinions. They don't anyway. They have right. staff. So the sure. district coordinators are writing opinions. Mm -hmm. They're providing all the staff support for all of the Act 250 decisions today. Okay. That's what they do. They're staff and they support this. Okay. So the volunteers or the right. district okay. commission, they run the meeting and they, over, they make the decisions, but they're supportive of staff. Okay. So with the enhanced board, the joint proposal, district commissions just, they're going. It's unclear to me. I, I think that that may have been framed a little um, by the by the conversation that happened in this room. That was a reaction to something that people were not expecting. I, I don't. I, I think that they were going to not have them be voting members. So there's a difference here that full voting members would be in hybrid number two of the region. You can't have. We've taken a lot of testimony on having members of a board that don't have a full say, and I think that has merit. And so, I, and I think that's been heard in the proposers of the joint proposal. So with the joint, there still could be input from the districts. So, yeah, under the major, the major applications, under hybrid two, uh, am I seeing that it wouldn't be the three member district commission as we know now to make determination of whether or not the, yes, the project could go forward or not. They, they have lost that power. Is that correct? I'm not sure I understand what you're Well, right now we have three members on district commission. And if a project, major project comes to them, they rule on whether or not it's, it, it meets the criteria. They tend to be involved right now in minor applications. So this, this assumes that majors are going to the board. I thought they were involved in major as well as minor. Well, they are now. Yeah. We're talking about making changes. Well, yeah. Well, maybe some of them are not. <laughs> I'm just wondering how it changes from what it is now. And I think the argument that I've been hearing is to keep the district commission in, in, its, present, uh, in its present form. Strengthening it is one is a, is an option and more training and more money. But I'm just kind of trying to sort it out what you mean? Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm not willing to uh, throw the district commissions over. I, I think they have a role, and I, I like the role they play. I'd like to see them do it better. And I'd like to make them stronger, give them more assistance, maybe even pay them more. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not inclined to uh, to drop them all together or just make their role a reduced one, where they would just hear minor applications. Well, if, I, if I may, sure. two of those individuals would also join mm -hmm. three other individuals to hear the major, so they are participating in that process. Well, it's just a, just a change, right? Just a well, you, yeah. I, I mean, it, 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 we another recommendation we've heard is to take uh, district commission, uh, uh, two more district commissions on to, from adjacent regions, like from District 7 the district five in, 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 in terms of dealing with something with district six. So you got three district commissioners plus a, a, a district commissioner taken from each each adjacent region. I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm not quite willing to, uh, to go along with the idea of giving this uh, joint proposal. I don't, I, this professional board, the PUC model, I don't want them to replace the commission. I don't favor it. Carol, I, I actually, sorry, I'm going to sneak out, but um, you guys should keep talking, and then 
we'll all be able to think about this overnight. But, but oh, what do you have? Well, yeah. Here, and then think about it. Uh, have the NRB fill openings within 30 days, provide training to the district commissions annually and so forth, and even, you know, going between commissions and everything. Um, the district commissions stay with full voting rights for majors, and they hear minors and decide whether things are minors or majors. All the appeals go to the environmental court. I think that gives us predictability. I think it consolidates appeals, keeps costs lower, and increases effectiveness. And then to the Supreme Court. That's what I think. Okay. Uh, you know, it's pretty late in the day to be tackling this. All right, all right. Change. I was Let's hoping she would hear it and then we'll pick it up. It. Uh, <laughs> what I can offer yes, sure. is, um, if folks are interested, is I thought it was really helpful <laughs> yeah. in having a table that has the same issue across the board. Maybe we could present it. What's that? No, I mean, that's mine. So yeah, yeah, that yeah, so was really helpful. Yeah. 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 yeah, This was really helpful. Um, being able to compare. Mm -hmm. um, and this helps to find what we mean by quasi professional or, or semi professional or professional. I think so. Um, I, I was so this is really, really intrigued by Ron Shen's presentation. Okay, Yeah, and so you do have some like you have some threshold questions that the this chart from the chair addresses them, but you know, what is your board doing? Who's on it? How many levels of appeal? I think those are the major questions that you're you're thinking about. <coughs> and then you know some of the other details that we incorporated may start to confuse that. But those are like the threshold questions about what you want this board to be doing. offers, they have to fill openings within 30 days. They provide training. Um, the district commission stay with full voting rights for majors and they hear majors and mi they hear minors and they decide whether something is a major or minor. Things go, all appeals go to the environmental court so they're all consolidated with um, A and R and DEC and everything and then all, and then they go to the Supreme Court. That's what that. the verb is. Okay. Well, that's what I. Well, she's I keeping the environmental court part of the. Yeah, I'm geez. keeping the environmental. She doesn't want to replace the uh, e court with verb. Well, no, the verb has the e court in it. Appeals. I, I was I was over on the side. That doesn't mean I'm not. Does willing the verb to go, go to something Supreme else? Court? It's just what I. The verb read. skips the e court. Goes yes. Sorry, sorry. Nope. Yeah. Well, I thought it was interesting. So that's just. Right that's going back to the right. environmental board. So. Yeah. You know, all our witnesses do, are blending in together. So yeah. I apologize yeah. for this. But I thought we heard, which I thought was helpful today, was that um, we there are so few appeals that even though there was a preference to, um, to consolidate, they felt that because balanced with the interest to reduce the number of appeals steps of appeal, um, we heard it probably could work with having the Act 250 appeals go right to the Supreme Court and allow the local permits and the ANR permits to go to the to the e, to the environmental division. That's what we heard today, meaning that there weren't that many appeals to worry about the need to consolidate. 
The only thing I would say is if you're yes. if you have if you're representing a client and the client's got to go one place and the other place, and it's, it's it, you know it's a lot. It's different places. It's different costs. And you've got to pay for both things and so forth. Timing may be off. That's all I want to say. I, I, if I may, just to follow up on what Carrie was saying, I think the testimony was such that there wasn't very many cases. It was rare that a an Act 250 mm -hmm. decision appeal was was married to an A and R permit <coughs> appeal or a municipal permit right. appeal. That's, that's that that so that you. rarely happened, so why not just go to the Supreme Court? Because it really doesn't happen much when you're combined. That's yeah. the testimony. Yeah. Now we should probably check that with we, NRB about yeah. that. I'd like to check the numbers on that. Which was the reason why I was supporting Judge the joint that? proposal. Sorry, you, even, you were talking about what the judge was saying? What we heard earlier today. Oh, earlier today, okay. Yeah, and then why I think the joint proposal of having appeals with Act 250 go right to the Supreme Court and not worry about the consolidation because it was rare that they both got appealed at the same time, and I was okay with that. And they seemed to think that it would be too complicated with minimal benefit if you were focused on consolidation as opposed to reducing the number of appeals processes back to the Jim? Um, how do we see um, appeals in hybrid two? Do they, do they go, so in hybrid two, I think I understand that JOs and and minors and administratives are done by our existing um, district commissions. Uh, not quite right. <laughs> I, I think the JO is done by the district coordinator, right. and then the others by the commission. Yeah. Um, and and the majors go to the full-time board, which is made up of three full-time people, which is pulled from the joint proposal, um, with two full, however, there are the, the two people from our district commissions get equal, equal stat voting status, so they're voting. So we have we we have a protected um, our our local interests in that way, um, and we're keeping the regions the same. That would be the district commissions, um, and but I don't I don't know then in either case whether it's a decision. Likely there would not be an appeal. On minors, I don't know if I can say it likely on JOs, but so do appeals from the district commission go directly to the Supreme Court, okay? And do appeals from the full time board's decision go directly to the Supreme Court? Yep. Well, that's a question. I mean, with JOs, I don't think, I'm not sure if the Supreme Court's going to be able to respond to JOs. I don't know. We, we are having NRB in tomorrow, so this is a great kind of priming conversation to have process questions answered directly from the folks doing that process. So um, my thinking is if you've strengthened the Natural Resources Board, that they might be the place where a JO gets sorted out. I mean, that's part of what's missing now, is that the, there isn't the really board any. doesn't ever get involved in any of those decisions, and so yeah. there's not a lot of guidance for yeah. staff and, yeah. and commission. Well, I, 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 I'm liking um, with, with an understanding that I just kind of um, burbled out <coughs> here that, that uh, I'm liking the hybrid proposal. Um, I've liked three, four other different things <laughs> prior to this, um, but at this point in time, that's looking really good to me. It skips a step 
we, I think in order for people to love whatever we do, we've got to make it, we've got, we've got to make it, um, the, the, the process shorter and less expensive for everybody. And, and I think, you know, this is, this is a good, good enough way to do it. Now, less expensive, the full-time board is going to cost mucho grande, mm -hmm. but we're not supposed to worry about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and nobody really knows what that means, how much that means, um, but uh, yeah. that will be worked out. Yeah. If we strengthen districts, that would mean more money to yeah, them. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, until tomorrow morning, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> number two, hybrid two bed. Well, I think it's, yeah, we can yeah. cogitate, carry, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, it, it's, um, I, I know we, when we heard from Ron Shams, who I, I thought had some interesting perspective, and um, the one thing that he mentioned, and I think is what we're all talking about, is how to strengthen the NRB itself so that there can be some accountability. With that accountability, you get greater consistency of decision making. My one question is whether and why we're th the public service, the public utility commission is a three member professional board. And I wonder whether does it make sense to have one regional, two full time to make a three member hybrid two in order to then fully support conservation districts with the right technical assistance people that we heard could be helpful. Do you mean regional commission? Yeah. No, district, 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 district commissions, commissions but they mm -hmm. talked about having legal support, they need the legal support, they mm -hmm. need technical assistance mm -hmm. and training, mm -hmm. and maybe you can do that by just the savings on the, what the board looks like, it would be three member, not five. Well, the thing is, the, one of the things that's happening here is that we are making changes to Act 250 that actually are going to require a stronger board. Yeah. And daily oversight and promulgation of rules and figuring out, I mean, that we've taken testimony on that. There's as I revisit our underlying bill, I'm super excited. We've done a lot of the work we set out to do in this, and in order to kind of make that happen in a professional way, I think that you need the stronger board. It needs to be people who are more than one mind. I mean, if, if you know, it needs to be. I don't think two people makes a board doing that work, I overseeing. I agree. But, but still, one is yeah. from a region, and so oh, yeah. in terms of guiding this organization as it grows into these changes, I don't think that's going right. to work. I hadn't worked at it that way, but I agree with you. Yep. Okay, I just threw that out. Yeah, no, it's fine. We're we're, that's what we're doing. <laughs> no, we're brainstorming. <coughs> <coughs> All right, I, I think I probably should have gone. My meeting was polite and gave me a little bye, but this was really... This was helpful. Yes, and, um, nice. I think we can adjourn for the day and tomorrow's Thursday. Try to stay oriented to the week. We're starting early, 8:30. Thank you. With Warren Coleman on a not a trail subject. <laughs>